Good morning everyone and welcome to Mellow Monday. And it is a Mellow Monday out here right now. I'm sitting on the porch of our cottage because it's raining out there. And it's been raining all night. And it's wonderful. It's glorious because we've been so dry. And we really needed this rainfall. So it is a time to give thanks to God. And that's exactly what our psalm coming up for this Sunday does. Psalm 138. It gives thanks to God. It's classified as a thanksgiving psalm. Let me just read the very first verses of it. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. There's a lot going on in this psalm that, that's kind of neat and interesting. Um, it is a psalm of thanksgiving. It talks about three different groups of people that the psalmist eventually approaches and and gives thanks to God in, in the presence of. One, we've already seen. Uh, before the gods, I sing your praise. For the gods, there's only one God, Yahweh. Well, yeah, for the people who are reciting this psalm, but don't forget, there's lots of gods out there. This is 2,000 years ago. Every nation had its gods, and, and people were always tempted to follow after those other gods. Hey, we don't, we aren't, are we? No. I mean, well, yeah, I love Sunday afternoon football, and I like making a decent paycheck, and, you know, I, I like being in a position of power and authority, and I like, I mean, come on, there's all these different likes that people have, right? That they yearn for and they look for and they can all become those things that displace our source and, and where we put our trust in and who we put our trust in, right? So who takes second place to a lot of these other gods? Our God, our Lord and Savior, yeah. So keep that in mind as you read this psalm. Uh, the person who wrote it, whether it was David or not, and it could have been David, evidently is not out of the woods no toward the very end he says though i walk in the midst of trouble you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies you stretch out your hand and your right hand delivers me yeah okay so he's still in trouble but he's giving thanks to god that god has answered his prayer and has preserved him in his time of trouble but what is the the real basis of his thanksgiving God's steadfast love and faithfulness. Oh, it's that word again, that hesed, that steadfast love. Um, one commentator said you can look at it as love that knows no limits, no boundaries. That's the love that God has for us. Most often in the Old Testament, it's translated steadfast love. Now, did you know that that word occurs 245 times in the Old Testament? Yeah, and over half of those times, it's in the Psalms. Yep, man, I stayed up all night counting those, and I'm a little tired right now. Not. That's what good commentaries do for you. They've done all the work for you. But it's, it's a very important word all the way through the Old Testament. So whenever you see it, you need to pay attention to it. It's that steadfast love, hesed. And emeth is the word for faithfulness, the Hebrew word for faithfulness. And that's an important word, too. Most of the time, these words are found in conjunction with one another. Steadfast love and faithfulness. Steadfast love and faithfulness. You'll see that everywhere. Uh, and they are the words that God used to describe himself. When he made himself known to Moses, he's giving the law to Moses, and he talks about his God's steadfast love and faithfulness toward the people. And that's, you'll find all that story in Exodus, the 34th chapter. You might want to pick it up and read that. But what's interesting about that word for faithfulness is the root word of it um, means to, to be reliable, to be firm. You can depend on it. And that is the basis of our word, amen. Amen. Okay, so, yeah, when you say amen, you're saying, God, you're reliable, you're faithful, you're dependable. We can always turn toward you. 
and know that you'll be there for us. And we have that all through this psalm where the person is giving their praise uh, before the gods, before the kings, and even in the midst of his enemies. <laughs> I like this, the way it ends at the very end. We already mentioned one instance of this. You stretch out your hand and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. So three times the psalmist kind of implores um, and mentions the word hands. So say, God, remember your hand. You know, when you're stretching forth your right hand, that's your hand of power. Well, and you've done that, Lord. You've stretched out your hand. And that right hand, it, it's what delivers me. So, Lord, don't forsake the works of your hands. In other words, keep on being faithful. Keep up your uh, steadfast love toward me because I really, really need it. Well, God's blessings be with you on this, uh, well, it's a mellow, mellow day, rainy day, but one we really, really need. Blessings be with you.